In the first half of the year, the economy grew by 0.9%, despite record levels of load shedding. The tourism sector grew more than 70% in the period, driven by arrivals of more than 5.4 million international tourists. This year, we hosted the Formula E, the BRICS Summit, the Netball World Cup 2023, and this week, we welcome up to 700 delegates to the 20th Agua Forum in Johannesburg. We have put our best foot forward and reminded the world of the beauty of our country, the warm spirit of our people, and the world-class facility for doing business and investing. Other sectors of the economy have also shown promising signs of growth in the first six months of the, of, of, of the year, including the construction sector growth by Koforma 2%, the agricultural sector grows by 7.8%, and the service sector is up 1.5%. Finance is 7.5%. In the words of the President, these are reasons for hope. The economic outlook over the medium term remains weak, reflecting the cumulative effect of power cuts, poor performance of the logistics sector, high inflation, rising borrowing costs, and weaker global environment. Unfortunately, since February, the risks to the economy that we warned about, including the decline in global commodity prices that grinded our substantial revenue last year, elevated inflation, and the depreciation of the rand have materialized. As a result, our public finances are significantly weaker. The main budget deficit has increased by 54.7 billion compared with the 2023 budget, with the 2023 budget estimates. This reflects lower revenue performance, higher public service wages, uh, wage bill costs, and higher debt service costs. The main reason for this are a sharp fall in corporate income tax particularly from the mining sector, although personal income tax collection was better than forecast. The result of the shortfall is substantial worsening in the main budget deficit in the current fiscal year. We now project a deficit of 4.9% of GBT, GBT, GDP compared to our previous estimate of 4%. Under these circumstances, measures to stabilize public finances and reform the economy to generate higher growth are essential. We recognize that alongside these measures, our most effective way of funding government is through an efficient tax administration. And by broadening the tax base, SARS will continue its focus on enforcing compliance in areas such as debt collection, fraud prevention, curb illicit trade, voluntary disclosures, and encouraging honest taxpayers to comply voluntarily. Every additional round of revenue collected is one round less which have to be borrowed. Madam Speaker, allow me to frame our fiscal challenges as follows. Government spending exceeded revenue since the 2008 global financial crisis. These rising annual budget deficits have reached an extent where the government will have to borrow an average of $553 billion per year over the medium term. As a result of gross debt rising from $4.8 trillion in 2023-24 to $5.2 trillion in the next financial year, by 25-26 it will exceed $6 trillion mark. We now expect gross government debt to reach 77% of GDP by 25-26. This is higher than the level we forecast in February. Over the next three years, debt service costs are, as a share of revenue will increase from 20.7% in 2023 to 22.1% in 2026 The cost or interest of this debt for the next year alone amount to around about $385.9 billion. 